Chris from Game Domain with a review of this year in video games. 2017 had a lot of ups and downs for the game industry. New blood was injected into the industry and some major names stepped up their game while others dropped the ball. Join us as we talk about the top releases, the big headlines, and the insane controversies. The Xbox One X was released back in November, and it's lived up to its purpose. The original Xbox One lacked the hardware to compete with the PlayStation 4, and the One X was made to close the gap. It's ironic that despite the unparalleled ability, there aren't a lot of games that make use of it yet. The One X improves the experience of running demanding games like Assassin's Creed Origins, Forza 7, and Destiny 2, but there haven't been any titles released specifically made to show its promise. Consequently, the release of the One X isn't currently remembered as a watershed event. You can rest assured that this minor story is the overture to some amazing games in 2018. When PlayerUnknown Battlegrounds releases for the Xbox consoles on December 12th, we'll see if we can get a preview of that. In October, word was released that Visceral Studios, maker of the Dead Space series, was being shut down. According to owner Electronic Arts, the studio would be spun down with personnel being moved to other studios under the EA banner. EA left the status of a linear, story-based Star Wars game being developed by Visceral as somewhat vague. Industry regulars were quick to point out that it's a pattern that EA follows. They snap up developers who made popular original games, like Dead Space, then do some executive meddling until the developer is making the same thing as everyone else, and finally, dissolve the studio because it doesn't offer anything unique. Maxis, Westwood, and Pandemic are all examples of EA spending a lot of money to make the gaming industry a boring, uniform sea of copy-paste games. Don't worry, we'll talk about Electronic Arts later. YouTube is an important part of gamer culture. Major YouTube personalities are gamers. Creators making streams, posting trailers, and providing gaming news. So much of what identifies gamers as gamers when we're not playing games travels through YouTube. And all of that is traveling on a rough road because YouTube has been a mess this year. Composer Alex Maurer went on a spree of issuing DMCA takedowns against YouTube videos because he wanted to resolve professional disputes. Because of one with mental health issues, videos were taken down and some professional YouTubers were threatened with the loss of their channels and their income. YouTube did nothing to protect creators. Around that time, YouTuber and gamer PewDiePie said a racial slur during a live stream. The backlash was intense, but temporary. However, shortly afterwards, YouTube started cracking down on videos that aren't advertiser- Without defining what advertiser-friendly meant, their algorithm began demonetizing content from professional streamers, Let's Players, and other community members. Again, creators were unprotected. Millions of views are brought into YouTube because of their professional gaming channels. But 2017 marked the year that viewers and creators finally understood how fragile the professional scene is on YouTube. Despite all the peripheral strumundrung, games themselves have been great, especially the indie games, Hellblade, Cuphead, What Remains of Edith Finch, Night in the Woods, and of course, Player Unknown Battlegrounds, are all great examples of what small studios could do when they put a vision behind a video game. Artistic vision, gameplay vision, aesthetic vision, whatever. 2017 was great for indie games, because they were made by folks who wanted to do more than add numbers to a proven franchise. PUBG is a great example of this. It's a vision of a shooter with no command points or reinforcements, just a player, a couple of guns, some luck, and a clock that ticks down until only one player remains. PUBG caught fire this year because it's a good shooter developed by people who like good shooters, and played by gamers who like good shooters. Look at Cuphead. It's hard to the point of frustration, but reviewers who could finish it consistently report reaching a point of flow during gameplay where their minds were fully engaged. Flow is one of the core reasons that people game. There's a lot of hemming and hawing about games as art, about games as something which should provide experience that satisfy instead of stimulate. No one's going to argue about Edith Finch being art, but this year made strong demonstrations between the artistic quality of games like PUBG and Cuphead to provide satisfying gameplay. The fall of Pokemon Go this year had been hard to believe. In 2016, folks are walking off of cliffs to catch imaginary monsters for a phone app. It was a game whose only obstacle to success was that it never predicted being successful. Login issues, crashes, and server limits were frustrating for early players, but eventually developers Niantic sorted it all out. Now though, after a series of controversial updates and lackluster game editions, no one talks about Pokemon Go. 
it's not in mainstream news headlines. The Pokemon Go Fest in July of this year had the same login and crash problems as the initial launch, disappointing over 15,000 people who had traveled to Chicago to catch Pokemon. It was so bad, some attendees even sued Niantic. So, Pokemon Go is dead, right? Weirdly, it's not. Its user base has dropped by two thirds, but that's still over 5% of all phone users in the US. The game still makes millions of dollars every month. The persistence of Pokemon Go, despite Niantic never being able to tell how popular it's going to be, is one of the most remarkable things about gaming. What is truly surprising is the failure of big name franchises like Mass Effect Andromeda and Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. Okay, we'll just talk about Andromeda. The ending of Mass Effect 3 was controversial, but everyone was still excited for a new chapter in the Mass Effect universe. We understood that in order for our galaxy altering decisions in the first series to matter, the second series would have to have a serious break. The alternative was alienating some of the series longtime fans. That seemed like a noble goal. So we went to Andromeda. And we got boring missions, clunky dialogue, disappointing moral choices, and mediocre writing that made it clear the story lacked the same inspiration behind the original series. The gameplay was an unfocused heap of mechanics with tacked on resource collection, crafting, and strike team elements burying mediocre third person shooting. In trying to not alienate their fanbase, Andromeda tried to be all things to all people, spread itself too thin, and killed the franchise. But there were plenty of successful AAA games. Resident Evil Biohazard reinvigorated a franchise which had gotten tired and had a, all but forgotten its horror roots. It might have cribbed a little bit from games like Outlast, but the execution was original, tense, and visually stunning. Nier Automata had strong ideas behind it. It combined varied gameplay with a well thought out setting and story that stands out amongst most of its peers. It's a crazy wild ride in terms of gameplay and characterization. And then there's Horizon Zero Dawn, which we'll talk about when we do our best games of 2017 video. But there were some fantastic games put out this year, thanks to the folks like Platinum Games, Capcom, Guerrilla Studios, and Nintendo. If there is one company that dominated 2017, it was Nintendo. Nintendo has been known to push out products that are ahead of their time, and they had just fumbled the launch of the Wii U, so there was a lot of skepticism when the Switch was announced. But Nintendo promoted and released a console that was as advertised. The Switch has sold about 8 million units since then. Much of that is thanks to titles like Splatoon 2, ARMS, and other games. Other games like Super Mario Odyssey and Zelda Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild does open world gaming right. It allows you to cater your experience to your game style. Want to relax and just beat up some enemies? Do it! Want to deal with the edge of your seat skill challenges? Do it! The world is organic and living, and your actions make a difference. Breath of the Wild knows that it's giving you the experience of the journey, and it gives that to you. Odyssey, on the other hand, takes an original platformer and makes a good platformer out of it. Original mechanics and fresh ideas were a perfect cure for a series which has always been ironically stale for a publisher known for making risks. Putting good games on a fresh platform was practically the brand identity for Nintendo in 2017, and we all hope they keep it up for 2018. I said we'd talk about Electronic Arts later, and here we are. If you don't already know, back in November it was revealed that in Battlefront 2, unlocking even one special character like Luke Skywalker would take about 40 hours of gameplay or $400 of real money. The total cost of unlocking all of the locked content ran into the thousands of dollars. Gamers called out what they thought were pay to win elements and a game being sold in pieces solely to pad EA's bottom line. After days of discontent, EA relented and cut back the cost of unlockable content. But without rendering any moral judgments, Battlefront 2 and EA were just the flashpoint for this outrage. The problem is old, but this year's rumblings can be traced back to Middle Earth Shadows Over Mortal, where the bonus ending required either additional hours of grinding or in-game purchases. In Assassin's Creed Origins, players could buy legendary items, secret item maps, and in-game currency for real-world money. And even in Destiny 2, whose loot boxes occasionally dropped performance-enhancing mods, got in on the action. 
Battlefront 2 has pushed the envelope after the community has built up a head of steam over the issue. It pushed gamers over the tipping point, and the result was that Battlefront 2's sales crashed. Electronic Arts stocks slid down, and governments around the world began inquiring as to whether or not loot boxes were gambling and should be legislated as such. Here at Game Domain, we try to keep our ear to the ground for newsworthy gaming stories all year round. If there are any stories from 2017 we missed, please let us know. And if you hear any news you'd like us to talk about in 2018, let us know in the comments below or via DM at our Twitter at Real Game Domain. And remember, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and this is Chris saying we'll see you next time.